What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we have the AMA Big Sur Sport 20 by 4 750 watt rear hub 48 volt 15 amp hour factory battery in the frame. This is the AMA Big Sur Sport Fafang components. This thing is stacked left hand thumb throttle, left hand display controls, hydraulic brakes, trigger shift, gear shift, and a nice big old seat with an integrated rack that comes with the bike. We are very happy about that. We are going to add a second battery on the frame here. We are going to add another 15 amp hours with this high long down tube battery. We are going to run an install here. We'll be utilizing this adapter for bottle cage mounts so we can shift it up and then possibly retain some of the movement through the frame for this step through version. We anticipate an external install so we will have a couple zip ties handy. The plate for removal of the screws, the screw heads are security torques so make sure you have some of those and then you're going to need some M5 screws to finish off the mount so that like in all the other videos, these screws are too big and you will need a smaller cap to get it flush so the battery will slide over the mounting plate. The screws from the bottle cage mounts for the bike from factory, the heads are too big so you have to get some replacements so that you, they will slide over the mount. Other than that, don't see much of an issue. External install, we anticipate this will go pretty quick. Make sure you have the right tools. Make sure you have the right screws. We will leave links below the video in the description for some screws for you to see what you will need. But if you have a local Ace or a Home Depot, I would suggest getting them there because you won't need too many. The uh, cost benefit ratio for the total expenditure on Amazon says you got to buy a lot for them to make it worthwhile to ship it. So think about that when you go to do this install on your own. Remember, you are not isolated to the battery we suggest. You can get any 48 volt battery you want. Just make sure you have the right connections and your BMS can handle the load. We know that this is a plus 20 current uh, limit on the AIM of Big Sur because of the 750. So keep that in mind. That's why we're use, utilizing the 40 amp kit. At the end of the video, we will give you some range calculations for this bike with the addition of the second battery. So keep that in mind. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida Facebook group. Get in that group, make an event and go for a ride with your e-bike friends. Here we go. These are T20 security torque screws. And one thing you'll want to note is that in the tip of this driver, there is a divot that allows for the insertion in the security torque screw. So keep that in mind when you're after this and you're going to need this type of tool to get it loose. You don't need the impact wrench, but you do need the security torques. There you go. Straight away, I'm looking at my XT60, and I'm pleased already. Inside here, you can see an opening out the bottom, and this is where we're going to target. We're going to run our cables through here and make our attachment to this XT60 after we unplug it. We're going to take our cables that come with the kit. You're going to need a male end and then a female end for each. So that's how we're going to run them up in here. There's our male end. There's our female end. I'm just going to unplug them, attach as fit. So there's that one. There's that one. And we're just going to go ahead and 
get this button back up. Right now, I just want to make sure that I am not damaging these screws. Don't strip, strip them, so we're just going ever so slightly back in. Now I'm going to take my cables and I'm just going to bring them up right through here. Now that I have my two ends, I'm going to take my balancer and then match my two ends. So the controller out has the male, so we're just going to connect that here. And you really can't mess this up, so don't worry. And we're going to connect the other, which is the battery. And what we're going to do, we're going to place it right here. And then I'm going to run some of this excess right back up into the housing. I'm just kind of shoving it back in that hole. And then we can strap and mount underneath just to make sure that the loose wires are collected. Another trick I like to do is run two zip ties. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to just start one. I'm going to go around the housing. Just catch at the wires. This provides a stopping place. Now, when I pull this, I don't want to pull too tight, so keep that in mind. I'm not trying to rip the wires out of the housing. I'm just trying to get it to a stable place. Same thing. Okay, these two screws I added, so don't think that they come with it. You're gonna still have to get all your stuff together. But first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and get these screws out of the bottle cage mounts because we will not be using them. So for these, these are the extra screws that I have. You can see total length is about 11 and then thread depth looking to be about seven millimeter. Actually, it's a lot longer than that. So eight millimeters. Uh, not sure about total fit on these, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna work. And they will demonstrate the need. And then the one thing that you need to know is the depth of the head. So this one is too long and you have to get replacements so that the battery can slide over on its mount. Now these Phillips are the ones that it comes with. Zero. And you can see total length 14. And then you're looking at about 11. 11 millimeters in length. So to make sure I have the necessary room here, I'm going to mount as low down as I can so that the, the actual plate will mount there. So I'm gonna use the bottom two screw holes. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take my mount and then put it up into position. So I'm gonna probably want some longer depth on that. I'm gonna go ahead and run in a longer five mil screw. 
and then show you what it looks like on the back side. So what you're trying to avoid is that right there. You don't want the depth of the screw to be so long that it hits the body. It looks like this will be okay, but it's too close for a comfort for me. And then that screw that's too close for comfort is a total of about 18 millimeters long thread depth is looking at 15 millimeters. So too much. I want to back that off. I think like 10 millimeter uh, total screw depth or thread depth on that one um, is the max. And then you saw the other one. So just keep that in mind. If you have some laying around, just know that you don't want to penetrate into the body by running the screw into the adapter. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make my connection to my balancer. And then they do make these at-home clips that will sticky to your frame and then, then clip on there. It's like, like home theater cable strapping, but uh, we'll try and leave a link for some of that in the description below. But this is the principle. Let's go ahead and get our battery on there. There we go. And what I'm going to do is take this out. So this is the factory battery. And as you can see, it's a 15 amp hour, 48 volt battery. And then from there, let's go ahead and see if we got power. And we do. Excellent. Let's make sure we get some wheel spin here. Perfect. Now, that is just the second battery. We know that the factory battery isn't in the bike. It is here. So to demonstrate that that works, let's go ahead and get this back in. That locked. And then we'll go ahead and take this second battery off. The bike is still on because we continued a connection. And then, perfect. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed a, another 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery on the frame. This one with the seat, the way it is a little bit tricky, but I can get my big old foot in there. I wear size 15, so it is doable. And that allows you to make sure that you get through. Let's go ahead and get to the range calculations of this second battery. So the original is a 15 amp hour battery and the second is a 15 amp hour battery. So we're gonna do 15 plus 15 equals 30 amp hours. Multiply that by 48, which equals 1,440 amp hours. We are gonna divide that by the mica toll constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour. And you get 57.6 miles out of this dual battery, AMA Big Sur Sport. This bike looks good. It looks good with the second black battery and the center of gravity on it is nice. And I really like the seat that it comes with and it's a smooth ride. The only thing I would wish for is a right hand thumb throttle, but I believe they've done that for the trigger shift. And right about now, it matches the industry standard. Uh, I know that a Vinton and AMA are right there near the same plane, and I would almost put the AMA Big Sur Sport above the Aventon. I really like their display a lot better, and with the Bafang components, there's a lot more you can do with it in terms of recoding the controller and the display so that you can break out some of the more robust features of the bike. We will leave a link in the description below for the battery. Remember, you are not isolated this battery. You can get any battery you want. You can mount it to your rear rack. Just make sure you have enough cabling. We do offer extension cables so that you can get up to here if you wanna put a basket or something, or if you have another battery in mind that you'd like, just make sure you have the right connection for XT60 to adapt to the balancer, and then make sure you're in your spec class.
If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out the Facebook group, eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. We'll talk to you next time.